So um, I see most of the panelists here, speakers are on track and we, we can go ahead and get started. Um, Janet, uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, definitely. Okay, good, good, good. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started uh, without any further delay. Um, so welcome. So this is the introduction um, you know, to this section today. Uh, for the people who are watching today, um, welcome here. Just to give a brief introduction at the beginning about this topic, about this special session is part of the S I um, ISMB ECCB 2021 uh, yearly meeting today. Um, today, we are going to um, open this session together with Zeneb. Uh, we are uh, co-organizers of this special session and mod modulators for all the talks today. Uh, so the topic will be emerging gain of function mutations and their characterization by multi-omics network biology. Um, so just as a brief, um, you know, um, uh, clarification. So the timing, uh, the zone, the time zone is a little bit different. We have speakers from uh, US uh, as well as from Europe. So the starting time now is 11 UTC, um, but it's seven o'clock uh, Eastern time and six o'clock central time, four o'clock for Pacific time as we have some people from California as well. Um, so uh, we are the two organizers, just give you an overall brief overview of the whole program here. Um, my name is Stephen Yi. I'm from University of Texas at Austin here at the USA. Uh, Zenif is also on the line. Yeah. Uh, she will be introducing herself later on for some part of her, um, her work as well. She's from the University of Texas um, Health Science Center at Houston, uh, USA here. Uh, so uh, as a brief, um, just as a heads up, the whole session is gonna be divided by, um, by three. So we have three parts, which is the same as most of the uh, special sections and many other similar sections, uh, I guess, at the whole conference um, as well. So uh, we have 20 minutes breaks um, uh, between part one and part two, uh, and part two and part three, which will be uh, listed here. Again, time, time zone conversion, you see UTC uh, time here, uh, where, and you, uh, Eastern time USA uh, corresponding session here. Um, so invited, keynotes, um, speakers, uh, as well as other um, uh, slots are listed here. Um, so this is also, this can also be found on the conference website uh, under special session SST04, which is this special section. So just as a brief overview, um, so that we can be all on the same page, especially the time zone difference um, between the UTC format and, and um, other time zone uh, formats in the US, for example. Um, so I guess uh, we also have some time to uh, briefly, uh, you know, name everybody here, just again, as a, uh, a good introduction for everybody to, uh, to, uh, to be uh, familiar with the, pan uh, with the panel of speakers we have today. Um, so, and later on, I think before each talk, we also will introduce each speaker, I guess. Then it will be introducing some, some part of it. Um, so I will be doing um, some parts as well. So we have um, uh, quite a few speakers actually for this special session. Um, we are really honored and excited to have everyone on board. Um, so, uh, so we we have um, you know again we cover uh, speakers from uh, from uh, United States, Canada, as well as um, Europe um, here as well. 
So they are um, experts in their respective fields, especially related to, um, to uh, computational and bioinformatics uh, in, the, in the area that we focus on today. Um, so briefly touch upon the, the, the list of speakers. We have um, Chris Birch, um, I see him here already. Welcome, good morning. Um, so uh, Chris Birch is from MIT. Later on, we'll introduce again, uh, right before his talk. Um, so we have Olga um, uh, from Princeton University, but I think uh, she might have some, um, some uh, delay in the talk. We'll, we'll hear back later on, see what's the update from that, from that side. Again, I think it's COVID pandemic. Um, so there's some sort of um, uncertainty there, but we'll check up. Follow that, uh, we will have Kevin um, Leachfield from University College London from UK. Um, so this is section one. And after that, we'll have section or part two, uh, uh, which will be opened by Yi Xing uh, from University of Pennsylvania. Um, so this section will also be joined by John Quackenbush, uh, Professor at Harvard. Well, again, we'll introduce uh, in detail later on during part two as well. I think uh, overall part two will be chaired by Zanip. Zanip will uh, introduce each speaker um, you know, in, in more detail uh, before each talk. Again, after John, um, after John will be Brandon Jia from McGrill, uh, uh, Mag McGrill University uh, in Canada. Um, we also have Claudia from uh, PNRI uh, Institute uh, in, Cali uh, in, uh, in uh, Seattle, uh, USA. Uh, in, the, in the last part after break, part three, uh, I will be uh, introducing those uh, two speakers, keynote speakers um, here, uh, Trey Attiker from UCSD, uh, as well as Stephen Brenner from UC Berkeley. I believe um, Stephen, the last, um, Stephen Brenner, the last uh, keynote will be a recorded talk, a re recorded talk. We'll be talking about that in detail later on as well. Um, okay, I think, um, uh, so, um, so basically to briefly touch upon the uh, question here, especially the, the topic that we are going to talk about, um, to give you a, uh, give everyone, especially everyone online, uh, the, the, uh, all the um, uh, participants, especially from the conference. So we are going to talk about, um, genotype phenotype relationships in human disease. So that's a fundamental common topic. I think most of the speakers will be, if not all, will be focused, um, will be focusing on. Um, so so uh, apparently there's um, a large number of genetic mutations, including somatic mutations such as in cancer, as well as um, germline mutations and other mutations identified really by next gen sequencing in the past two decades also. Um, so with a huge um, number of um, uh, genotype of genotypic information we have available. Um, so, uh, so the question would be, how do we link genotype to the various types of phenotype that is present in the population of patients or in the normal population. Um, so we know there's a huge um, heterogeneity or diversity in terms of genotypes. We also know there's a huge diversity, a wide range of um, phenotypes available in various diseases. Um, so apparently there is a, there is a, a huge interest that we would like to link them between each genotype and each phenotype. So, um, so apparently 
we can uh, we we can interpret this complex phenomena um, uh, in many different ways. So in this um, uh, session, we are going to uh, interpret in terms of gain of function. So in other words, we have um, you, we have um, evidence in literature talking about different mutations having a loss of function events. I think that's covered by really a ton of publications so far. Um, so they include a loss of interactions in the uh, in uh, associated with with um, those mutations, uh, causing a perturbation of specific pathways in the uh, in the network leading to a certain phenotype at the same time we also have a very interesting uh, phenomena that came uh, came to be a focus i think in recent years um, certain mutations really had a uh, gain of interaction or gain of function uh, behavior leading to specific phenotypes. And their patterns are also different, as you can tell here. Uh, they can have um, a gain of specific or different interactions depending on the nature of the mutations. So which could also lead to a whole range of phenotypes. So in, in brief, so basically this means that deregulated gene regulatory networks in the cell or in different organisms could lead to uh, or could be underlying genotype phenotype uh, complex relationships. So there are a bunch of um, you know emerging review articles or research um, uh, you know which I cannot cover today um, you know on this topic. Here is just a brief uh, you know overview uh, from my group you know published in this in this uh, exciting area. Um, but again, so this will be um, an area that uh, I know not, uh, you know, not restricted to the speakers only. I think there are quite a few um, active research uh, going on, um, you know, in this direction already. So um, just uh, again, as a brief um, kind of uh, proof of concept or, you know, kind of a, a thing to get an overall idea, uh, as you can see here is a model network, um, you know, hopefully that's a functional network uh, that is, uh, that is uh, going on in, in a cell or in a uh, model organism, uh, including virus, you know, those kind of non-cell uh, cre creature as well. So in here, you can see there are interactions um, among different molecules, um, so including proteins, RNAs, and DNAs. So the kind of interesting phenomena that we'll be talking about today is that uh, in addition to this conventional view of mutations leading to literally loss of all interactions surrounding this um, gene of interest, so cause of a known loss of function event, so um, it's like a, um, a non-mutant, you know, uh, caused by, by a deletion of the gene entirely, but this case is a mutation that leads to a um, loss, of, um, loss of function event. I think then we'll be talking about that very soon in the next few um, slides about one uh, situation where you see a truncation uh, mutation that we know often lead to, or, or you know, so-called uh, nonsense mutation. Uh, you often lead to a, a you know, stop codon in the protein. And by, um, by literature, by the previous knowledge that we have, such mutations often lead to a, you know, um, uh, uh, RNA-based kind of decay. Um, so this will lead to a, uh, you know, a, um, a um, um, uh, kind of disruption of the RNA and, uh, you know, degradation at the protein level. So all of that is actually a pretty interesting, um, you know, uh, I mean, this is actually the old previous knowledge about uh, nonsense mutations, for example, but um, then I'm just going to talk about something uh, 
very different, but it's an exciting new field um, of view in this direction as well. But as you can see here, um, so different mutations could also lead to a partial effect of the network, not really uh, a destruction of all interactions, but some pathways or selective other pathways um, uh, leading to a so-called agetic. So this is actually quite interesting. We, we have a few papers, um, you know, uh, as well as um, Mark Vidal from, uh, from Harvard. Um, so, uh, so this will be a subtle effect, so to speak, in the network, but it's quite distinctive um, from, from one mutation to another based on their specific perturbation uh, of the network leading to uh, what we believe different phenotypes or different cellular, cellular behaviors. And of course, this will be again, um, a, a loss of all kinds of uh, interactions, all interactions, but this is a mid-sense mutation compared to a non-sense um, you know, uh, that I talked about. And then uh, lastly, you can, you can see here, um, which will be the mutation that do not really inter, uh, uh, change the um, interactions. They are like a wild type, what we call causal wild type, but they could really affect um, other aspects of the protein, like stability and folding and other aspects, uh, in addition to uh, interactions. Um, so this one, last but not least, the topic of the section today will be a gain of gain of function or gain of interaction in this case, uh, the scenario number six, as you can see here, um, that it gains an additional interaction compared to the native network where the wild type scenario would be. So uh, we have tons, a ton of examples really, it's not really well studied, uh, getting into an emerging direction, but as we know, uh, especially in, this, in the example of cancer, uh, many mutations are gain of function uh, leading to a uh, increase in growth phenotype as well as a potential uh, signaling uh, pathway changes in the cell as well. So this will be a topic that uh, will be discussed in more detail by some people, uh, by some speakers as well in here. Um, all right, so this part, I think um, Zanip will be um, talking about that, expanding it more. Yeah, uh, okay. thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, um, as you told before, yeah, I am, I'm an assistant. I just joined the UT Health School of Public Health as an assistant professor and uh, started to form my group. And I'm also part of the Center for Mendelian Genomics. And um, we are uh, mainly working on the germline mutations causing uh, rare uh, disorders. And um, my group is especially uh, working on uh, like uh, trying to classify the uh, transcripts with truncating mutations, as you mentioned. And um, this is um, like important, um, for example, like uh, sometimes this uh, transcripts with truncating mutations, they are having the premature termination codon uh, early on. And in this case, they are predicted to go through this nonsense mediate decay. That is the actually a uh, very well established and evolutionary conserved cell surveillance mechanism in cells. And they are going through, the, through this degradation mechanism and then um, uh, actually um, uh, uh, after that, uh, they are uh, having this monoallelic expression. One allele is getting degraded. On the other hand, uh, actually, can we go one slide before? Sorry. Sorry, one second. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, but on the other hand, sometimes the transcripts having the uh, tr truncate mutation later on in the transcript, especially in the last exon or in the penultimate exon, in this case, uh, they are usually predicted uh, to escape from nonsense mediated decay and produce uh, truncated or altered peptide products. And uh, we are especially focusing on this kind of transcripts and uh, with a potential gain of function or 
like dominant uh, negative mechanisms. And we exemplify uh, this kind of transcripts actually uh, causing um, a number of rare disorders um, and uh, such as the REST gene. Uh, it's a, a very well-known oncogene, but uh, in the Mendelian disease space, we show this gene uh, is causing a rare hereditary gingival fibromatosis uh, disease phenotype uh, through uh, this uh, truncating mutation in the last part of the transcript and um, escaping from NMD, nonsense mediated decay and um, having the altered or truncating peptide product, product and causing the disease phenotype through a potential gain of function mechanisms. Uh, so in this session, uh, we are hoping to learn more, as you mentioned, Stephen, uh, about uh, those potential gain of function mutations and their role in uh, the disease network biology. Um, that's all on my part, actually. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the last two slides will be just a little bit more information on our two um, organizers here. So um, my lab um, is at UD Austin. So here just brief summary, um, brief overview of the people in the lab. I think I will not really get into that in detail and then finding sources from NIH, uh, Texas and our Livestrong Cancer Institute uh, where I'm affiliated as well as Susan Coleman um, Foundation and Thank you, thank them very much for the generous support over the years. Uh, and then Zainab, you have a slide here too. You wanna yeah. say something more? Yeah, uh, as I told you, I, I just joined the uh, Department mm -hmm. of Epidemiology and Human Genetics in UT Health, uh, School of Public Health. And uh, I uh, start to form um, our group. And uh, also we are a part of uh, four centers for Mendelian genomics. And uh, in this center, we are entering the phase three. Uh, in the next five years. So we are gonna study more um, the germline mutations causing these rare disorders. Mm -hmm.